Well, if there are any doubts whatsoever that the Trump campaign is utterly desperate, look no further than this. They just recruited disgraced sociopathic ex-campaign manager Corey Lewandowski back to the fold, and then he got grilled on the Fox Propaganda Network about the fact that the campaign he has been enlisted to help is in utter disarray. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, just to set the stage, give you a little palate cleanser for who Corey Lewandowski is, because perhaps many of you have blissfully forgotten about this sociopath. Um, unfortunately, he is one of the worst, even though he's not a household name. I want to just remind you of one of many examples of his derangement. This is a clip from the Fox Propaganda Network. Uh, just it will give you just a microcosm of who this man is. I mean, look, I, I read today about a 10 year old uh, girl with Down syndrome who was taken from her mother and put in a cage. Wah, wah. I read about a, a did you say want want to a 10 year old with Down syndrome? What being I taken said from is you mother? can pick anything How you dare want, you? Up, but the bottom line How is very dare clear. You? When you cross How absolutely the border dare you, illegally. Sir. So, yeah, that was Corey Lewandowski. And even even the Fox host in question seemed kind of like, dude, what? Uh, yeah. Womp womp the story of a 10 year old girl with Down syndrome being separated from her family under the Trump administration and thrown in a cage. Um, really despicable stuff. And there's way more than that, too. We'll get into a deep dive from the Daily Beast. But first, it's always fun when occasionally the Fox Propaganda Network will interview MAGA Trump officials and members of the Trump campaign and actually either hit them with hard questions or at least uncomfortable facts. And there are at least two instances of a recent interview between Corey Lewandowski and uh, Martha McCallum of the Fox Propaganda Network, in which she references some really uncomfortable reporting for Lewandowski to grapple with. And we're going to start with this one here. Uh, um, Harris leads Trump by 17 points among female voters in Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin, um, which is clearly the area that the president, the former president, needs to win. And J.D. Vance has been working very hard in those areas, spending a lot of time on the ground in those areas. But that is a very big gap that has clearly widened with Harris's move to the top, Corey. So what is he going to do specifically to work on women voters? And, you know, would Nikki Haley have helped him a lot with this group if the choice had been her? Well, the reality is the media has given Kamala Harris a pass. They haven't talked about her record at all. And so, listen, we have an incredible surrogate operation, whether it's Elise Stefanik or, or Governor Huckabee. Uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of women who are prepared and ready and able and will be hitting the campaign trail for Donald Trump. But, Martha, I don't believe women are monolithic. They vote on a series of issues. And, yes, gender may be one of those, but they care about all of the other things that every American cares about, which is the safety and security of their family, their economic freedoms, and they know that under under a Trump administration, they will be better off. So we saw this in 2016. Yeah, so that's pure cope from Corey Lewandowski. If the if women, uh, as he tells it, believe those lies about the Trump administration, then Donald Trump would be polling better with that cohort. Doesn't make any sense. Hey, listen, this particular very important co cohort you are seriously struggling with. So what are you going to do? to increase your odds. Well, actually, we're doing so damn well with that cohort because they know that the Trump administration will do better for them. Well, it's not true. These two things can't exist simultaneously. The fact of the matter is that Donald Trump is hemorrhaging suburban women in particular because, well, he is ultimately the single greatest reason why their reproductive freedoms are painfully limited, why at least one third of American women live in states with absolutely ludicrously dystopian abortion limits, why we hear story after story after story of a pregnant woman in a conservative state having to flee the state because she is unable to get an abortion even under life-threatening circumstances. Kate Cox from Texas is one of the most telling examples. I mean, we're, we're being inundated in these stories or women actually nearly dying or dying as a consequence of these really restrictive abortion rates. Donald Trump is the primary cause of that because he appointed, you know, three very conservative Supreme Court justices, which who who all of whom voted to overturn Roe v. Wade. And Donald Trump has publicly said, give me credit for that. Then he wants to distance himself when it's politically convenient. But it's not working to say nothing of the fact of his just general gross behavior. Right. The guy is a misogynist. He's a sexist. He's an adjudicated uh 
rapist, right? He was found liable for sexual abuse and defamation of E. Jean Carroll. And the presiding judge very clearly said that as far as the jury was concerned, that meant that Trump raped her. That's not going to endear him well to this cohort of women. It's just not. And so I, I just love the fact that uh, even Martha McCallum, who clearly wants Trump to win, you even see the desperation in her voice. I mean, wouldn't Nikki Haley, wink, wink, wouldn't it have been so much better if if Trump had gone with Nikki Haley as a vice president, Nikki Haley, who we had on the Fox Propaganda Network just the other day, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, to help you all with a cohort that you desperately need. And I just love it because so much of that, not only did he get the facts thrown in his face that he is so far behind in these swing states that he desperately needs to win, but among crucial cohorts that he has to successfully persuade and has utterly failed to do so. Just you love to hear the despair. You love to hear um, the, the facts be hammered, particularly with somebody like Corey Lewandowski, who's just, again, a genuinely terrible person. There was another instance as well. And here's where we are. The Democrats are so concerned about Donald Trump that they had to switch out their candidate at this late stage, right before the convention. They had to coronate, you know, the vice president of the United States who didn't have to go through the primary process and, and listen to the voters because they're so afraid of Donald Trump. This is Donald Trump's race to win. The American people know what his record is. And we're going to continue to define the failures of the Biden-Harris administration and remind them what four more years would look like under these draconian policies. So, you know, you've seen the reporting uh, that this whole situation that you just described, the changing at the top of the ticket, Biden is out, Harris is in, that it has made uh, the former president angry and a little off his game. And people have, you know, said that he's been rambling in some of his recent speeches. He's getting criticized for that. Is he off his game right now? Well, he's not off his game, but look at the difference in these two campaigns, Martha. Donald Trump sat and did a press conference for an hour yesterday, answered questions. Kamala Harris continues to refuse to sit down and answer tough questions from reporters. Right now, she's winning the election. She doesn't have to. Her candidacy started three weeks ago. Trump's been campaigning for months, and, and Trump doesn't substantively answer questions. Trump rambles. He goes on non sequiturs. He lies. Uh, he you know, indulges in conspiracy theories about fake crowds, AI crowds, but he doesn't actually answer questions. What Corey Lewandowski is struggling with at the moment is the fact that right now, very few people outside the Beltway and outside the offices of these very well-funded news organizations, actually, very few of them care that the vice president hasn't done a sit-down interview. She will, inevitably, but right now, she has no political incentive to do so because she's winning and her supporters don't care. So again, I'm glad that uh, at least on two instances, Martha McCallum of the Fox Propaganda Network hit Corey Lewandowski with some really bad reporting for Trump. And I don't think Lewandowski did a particularly persuasive job in uh, assuring the American people or Fox viewers that Trump has this under control. So let's get into a deeper dive of who Corey Lewandowski is. This is from the Daily Beast. Trump must be desperate if Corey Lewandowski is back on the team. He's back. Eight years after Corey Lewandowski was fired as Donald Trump's campaign manager, the sexually transgressing creep has been rehired. He returns as a, quote, senior advisor, end quote, despite having thoroughly proved himself to be a liability. Among other things, he mocked the handicapped by joking about a 10-year-old migrant child with Down syndrome who had been separated from her mother at the southern border and put in a cage. Womp womp, Lewandowski said on television in 2018 after being told of the girl's plight. In 2021, Lewandowski seemed to make himself all the more unhirable when he was charged with sexually harassing the wife of a big-time GOP donor at a Las Vegas charity event. The victim, Trishel Odom, reported to authorities that Lewandowski touched her on the legs and buttocks against her wishes. He then stalked her through the venue while spewing lewd remarks and boasting of his supposed sexual prowess. He was charged with criminal sexual harassment, but got a plea deal that included, quote, impulse control training. Quote, he will no longer be associated with Trump world, a Trump spokesman declared at the time. By then, Lewandowski's impulses had reportedly led to affairs with at least two women who were major figures in conservative politics. He was and is married to the widow of a friend who was killed on 9-11. But whatever his transgressions, Lewandowski had also formulated a guiding political mantra. He inscribed it on a whiteboard at Trump headquarters early in the 2016 campaign. Quote, let Trump be Trump. And now you don't even have to read the rest of the damn article because you know why Corey Lewandowski has been drafted. What have we heard from Trump recently? The flailing and the ranting and people begging him publicly to not do that. What has Trump reportedly said? We've covered it in videos. 
I am who I am. That's what he says. He doesn't want to change because he's pissed off. He's stupid. He's narcissistic. And he thinks that the world should work around him, should bend itself to his, his whims and wishes. This guy clearly agrees. So Trump came to see that principle as the key to his success against Hillary Clinton. He'd been recorded uh, saying that a star such as him can grab women by whatever. He said that a TV anchor who displeased him had been bleeding from wherever. That's actually he's re that's a reference to Megyn Kelly, former Fox News host Megyn Kelly, who has since become a devout Trump acolyte, but has also very recently started to criticize him again. So who the hell knows? But he had still beaten Clinton. It seemed that he really could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and not lose any votes as he famously boasted. But with President Biden's victory, it turned out Trump did not have as many votes to lose as he imagined. And if he shot somebody, he would at least get indicted for it. Trump still insists he won in 2020, citing bogus conspiracies of voter, widespread voter fraud. Much of his base believes this lie, and a majority of other Republicans have been afraid to stand up to him. He seemed to be cruising toward a relatively easy victory over the failing incumbent this November, but that suddenly changed when Biden dropped out of the race. Trump now faces Vice President Kamala Harris, and the former president suddenly looks like he might lose. His response has the markings of what psychologists call narcissistic collapse, the phenomenon that occurs when a narcissist's grandiose sense of self feels threatened. Quote, my uncle is panicking, said Mary Trump, a psychologist as well as the former president's niece. Quote, he's running against a strong black woman and a former prosecutor who isn't afraid to call him out or mock him. His whole campaign strategy was based around attacking Joe Biden, his age, his infirmity, his cognitive decline. She went on, she went on quote, now he's that he's up against a much younger candidate with a history of prosecuting criminals like him. He's painted himself into a corner. How do you escape from your own narrative about how bad it would be for the oldest candidate in the history of this country to win the election if that candidate is now you? And in an intolerable presage to presage to the sudden possibility of defeat, Trump found himself eclipsed. Quote, knowing him as I do, I can tell you that he's well, that the thing that's probably bothering Donald the most is that he's not the biggest story in politics anymore. There are many, many reasons Donald should be worried about a Harris candidacy, but it's the palpable excitement around Harris since Biden announced he was stepping aside that should worry him the most. And so now you see why he is pulling Corey Lewandowski back into the fold. Why wouldn't he? Corey Lewandowski is, again, the, the, the little devil on his shoulder, the, the voice of his id. Just do whatever you want. Be you. Be abrasive. Be insulting. Be vicious. Go on the attack. And you know what? Politically speaking, as a Democrat, this actually not only might be good in the sense of that it's an affirmation that Trump's campaign is desperate, but it might actually help further undermine whatever chances Trump has left to win the election, which are reasonable, still relatively close, right? But if Lewandowski feeds Trump's worst impulses, that may just preordain an inevitable defeat. So who knows? But this guy is awful, should be relentlessly mocked and scrutinized. And by the way, Trump and Trump campaign officials should field vicious questions from the press if we really care about a free and fair media for hiring this guy back in the first place, given his checkered past. Let me know what you think in the comments.